Hello, welcome to my new YouTube channel. I want to post some videos to show you how to repair your own machine, especially the um, the sensor problem that everyone seems to have and not many people have done a video on this. This machine's got a few problems, mainly the lights don't work and it doesn't cool. It's not because of the sensors, it's because the compressor's failed, which I will show you how to diagnose that fault and how to repair in a future video. So, let's get started. We'll turn the power off, disconnect the plug, remove the keg, and take it from there. Okay, so I've removed the keg, disconnected the power. Don't forget, there's a switch on the side of the machine round there, and also, there's the plug underneath the machine. Remove them both to be on the safe side so you know that the machine's dead. Next, we'll take off the, turn the machine. Next, we'll take out the two screws this side, two screws on the other side, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so this is what the machine looks like without the, uh, the covers on. Someone's already repaired this one, or tried to. You can see the jelly bean connectors there for the uh, the ambient temperature sensor. Also, let me turn it around. The connectors here. Someone's had a go at changing the the ball sensor. Um, but what I'll do is I'll change all three, so you can see how it's done. Firstly, you'll need a pair of long nose pliers, a pair of cutters for the cable ties. Uh, plain screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so let's get cracking. Underneath this, there's also the bolt sensor and around the back here, this sensor fastens inside there, inside the plastic, someone's already changed it. Um, I'll show you how to change them. The, the, the hardest two are the two here. Um, you need to gently remove this um, rubber cover and you've got the bowl sensor sorry you've got the keg sensor there which I've already cut the cables at the back because I made a mess of the first video if you look here we go cut the cables and now it comes and the cables are over here you need to keep them separate so you know which is which. So these are for the keg, and this is the ball sensor here, which someone's already had a go at. So cut the cables there, there. I will show you how to test them as well. <laughs> go back inside, and this clip here, let's see if I can get a bit closer. As you can see, this is the, uh, the ball sensor. It's tucked away underneath the, the the plate here well it's actually inside the bowl you can see there that's the the bowl sensor it's a bit tricky to take out but we'll have a go um, how I do it is a pair of long nose pliers hold the clip release it from there take a small screwdriver down the back of the clip Pull the clip up with the long nose pliers so you're actually getting the screwdriver behind just to pull it forward a bit and there you can see it comes out obviously i've disconnected it to give me some slack but as you can see there's the sensor inside the clip so here we have the two sensors which i've taken out um, and we just replace them in reverse order the new sensor, which you probably get from Amazon, it looks like this. Um, you have got to fiddle about with the the, uh, the bracket, this bracket here. So I'll just show you how I do it. Take the, the old sensor out and I tend to prise this bracket open slightly, just enough to get this through the hole. It's a bit fiddly so it may take me a few attempts to open it up 
and just slightly push it through the hole, pull the screwdriver out and then leave it maybe, what's that, five millimetres through the clip. Okay, then leave a fair length on the, the cable and cut the cable. I always replace the the bowl temperature sensor first because it's the most difficult one to get in. And then we'll put it back inside the machine. So we we'll put the sensor back, the cable down the hole and put the clip back under the bowl, if you can see it there. Pushing down underneath. My fingers are in the way, my hands are in the way. I'm pulling back. Let's get the screwdriver. Pushing back into position. As you can see. There we go. And that's the bowl temperature sensor back in. Next we'll do the uh, the keg temperature sensor. Okay, so we'll put the keg sensor back in now. Put the cable back down the hole. Pull him out around the back. Should be able to feel it there. Yep, and pull him into position. Slide the, if you can see from my hands, slide the little rubber grommet uh, mount underneath and push down behind the lugs of the mount underneath. And there we go. Ready to go round the back to do the wiring. Here's the two cables pulled through from behind. The ball sensor is the longest one. I left it longer purposely so I knew which was which. So we will connect them up. I will uh, go through the process of doing this. It can be a bit fiddly. If you don't get them into the connectors properly, you have a big problem. First we'll make the connection for the keg sensor. The jelly bean connectors are a bit fiddly but if you push one from each side of each cable into the connector you need to make sure that they're real I'll just zoom in so you can see it you need to make sure that both the wires are really inside the jelly bean connector before you crimp it if not it won't work so push them both in and then the long nose pliers crimp and you can see through the back there, both cables are well inside the jelly bean connector. Sometimes with these connectors from China, they uh, some of them don't work. You can tell when you put the cables in because you, you hit a dead end. So here's the next one. Okay, one in. Two in, turn over so you can see. So you can see they're really into the bottom of the connector. You can see the, sorry about the fingers and crimp it from behind so you know that it's done. So that sensor is now connected. I'll do the other one exactly the same and then I'll show you how to test it. Now to change the third sensor in the base. Um, this is the sensor that was in, just tucked away inside. This is actually uh, the wrong sensor. It should be uh, 10k and this is an 8k 
so we'll take the machine base off and uh, put the correct sensor in to take the machine base off there's four screws one there and one there and two around the other side then you can lift the machine out of the base I'll come back when I've done that there's the machine uh, out of its base and I'm just going to connect the sensor onto the existing cable as you can see there the zoom in the wires are deep inside the connector push it shut and then do the do the other one there is gel inside these so sometimes if they've been exposed to extreme heat the gel uh, melts and then it, it resets so you can't actually get the um, the cables right into the connector like that it won't let you but people just press the button and think they've done it and they haven't so that's the connector there for the the ambient temperature sensor just zoom out again while i'm uh, here i just wanted to show you around the back of the machine as you can see there the uh, the condenser needs cleaning out um, because if not this can cause big problems for your cooling issues um, so all this dust and gunge all needs cleaning out I'll do that later but I will show you now how to test the uh, the temperature sensors okay so <clears throat> now to check that the sensors are working take off the little cover on the front there take a screw out remove the cover then you've got three connectors here in a row a black one a red one orange pull out the orange and turn on your test meter to ohms connect onto the terminals of the little plug As you can see, this is about, put your finger on it and it'll go up or down. <clears throat> what I tend to do is throw something cold in the bowl, bag of fruit, put it all the way, and uh, you will see the temperature, well the, the, the thermistor going up. So if you pull out the red one, Connect on to the red one, and we should see some movement in the, as you can see, there is movement. Slow, but there is movement. And then we go to the black one, which is for the ambient temperature sensor on the back. bit fiddly trying to do this so I've got that in my hand look you can see there that's going down because of the heat rather than up because of the cold so that shows all three temperature sensors are working so plug them back in and away you go that should kill you cooling problems unless it's something else <laughs>